So I think it's best to start off today's video by making it clear from where and really from when the information I'm presenting today came from. You see, I have all different types of sources connected to semiconductors. You know, sometimes they actually work at a big company like Intel or NVIDIA, and sometimes they just work with that company. Maybe they distribute like NVIDIA's stuff or distribute stuff to NVIDIA so NVIDIA can make their graphics cards. Maybe they work at a test house. Maybe they are some outsourced firm that helps with some part of creating some product. You know, sources can come from all different types of places with all different types of jobs. Now, that's one way to categorize my sources by what they do and where they work. But you could also categorize them by the type of relationship I have with them. You see, I'd say one group of my sources are people that I talk to like every other day. You know, really, we talk to each other half the time, not to share information to help each other's jobs. But sometimes we're just talking because, well, not a lot of people in our personal lives actually are as big of a dork about semiconductors as we are and so we just like talking to each other you know a lot of my videos that have to do with like macro level things going on in the industry sentiment at companies and like volume and sales leaks that comes usually from from those sources although sometimes they get some huge bombshells that are just thrown to me immediately and i get a video out but then there's another type of source these are usually the extra busy engineers and professionals that work directly at these companies like well like amd you see they're busy. I don't bother them every day because I don't want to. I don't want to be annoying. But every now and then, frankly, if I remember to, I'll go, you know, I've been talking to that person for a while. There's rumors about this going on. They probably could tell me exactly what's going on with this architecture, couldn't they? I should see if they're willing to talk. Sometimes they're not, but sometimes they are. A lot of my biggest bombshell leaks with documents to back them up, that comes from these types of sources where I... It occurs to me to reach out to them about something or once in a blue moon they see something come across their desk and they're like tom would want to see this i should reach out you know these types of sources this latter group are behind things like that strix halo leak which by now has been basically entirely confirmed to be correct and also that playstation 5 pro leak which is pretty much almost literally confirmed to be true by sony now if you didn't miss it but anyways i say all of this because some Zen 7 info that I've actually been hinting at for months now, well, I have been told by some of my best sources directly at AMD that it's it's safe to share. But think about it, if I've been hinting at it for months, that means this comes from conversations I had directly, not just via email, but like on the phone with people months ago. And so... That's why in some ways I talk about it in a way that will be, oh, I think this is going on. Last I heard, it's this. Because it is mostly two-month-old information. And some of it actually didn't even have to do with Zen 7. It had to do with Zen 6. And I want to talk about the Zen 6 stuff right now here. So anyways, AMD Zen 6 update April 2024. So as of now, AMD is expecting to have the overall designs of Zen 6 core architectures locked in around quarter three, 2024. So yeah, by the end of this year, we're gonna have pretty much full dossiers on what Zen 6 is, and it may even be as soon as sometime, like, I don't know, September or October, based on what I'm told. Now, additionally, and interestingly, it's still not 100% decided how much of the family will be two nanometer. And that surprises me. From the sounds of it, I thought it was basically locked in. Hey, 32 cores is for sure two nanometer. And I think it is. And 16 cores is for sure three nanometer. But I'm now hearing, and this is the one little piece of new information this week, kind of, like that it's a little bit in flex, that they're not 100% sure. And well, based on this and based on some other things I've heard that I don't think it's safe for me to say directly, but... I am getting the feeling that Zen 6 is going to be delayed to 2026. I'm not 100% sure. I could see an end of 2025 launch again, but I don't think it would surprise anybody, really, would it, if AMD launches an architecture at least a year and a half after the previous one. That wouldn't be that crazy. And considering some of this stuff sounds a little wishy-washy still to this day, I think it's probably launching 2026. All right, now, Zen 6, though, has three variants. Standard, Dense Classic, and Client Dense. Client Dense aims to be even denser than Dense Classic at the expense of efficiency. And so, yeah, just to make it very clear on what I mean by those three variants there... There's standard Zen 6, just like there's standard Zen 5 and Zen 4. I don't really think I need to explain. That's like the generally highest clocking, most vanilla version that doesn't have the highest core counts. All right, that's what the standard will be. Then there is, of course, Dense Classic. That is the successor to what we call 4C, 5C cloud cores, right? This saves on die space per core, but it's clocked lower, but it's also really efficient. So you get more cores per CCD, extra efficiency in those cores, but they take up 
you know, less space and they don't clock as high. But then there is going to be client dense. Now this aims to be even denser than dense classic. I heard that it could be 40% to 50% smaller per core, maybe literally cutting it the die space in half per core, but it doesn't aim to be as efficient and it might get hotter. So it's not really meant for server. I'm sure some of them could be used in server. It's really meant to be used really in the same way that E cores are used by Intel. I know Intel calls them efficiency cores, but they use a boatload of energy. However, they clock decently high and get you good multi-threading performance while using less space. That's really the idea behind the new client dense thing they're working towards right now. Now, if I put the information back on screen, originally Zen 6 intended to mostly carry over the memory controller from Zen 5. But at this point, at least I'm being told it's received an almost from scratch redesign and the execution schedule has also been rebuilt from scratch as well. It wasn't initially planned to do that. Zen 6 is close to, as far as I can tell, being as big of an undertaking as Zen 2 was, or maybe honestly even bigger. And that's because Zen 5, you know, had a lot of issues and a lot of things needed to be fixed in Zen 6. And so again, I've said this in a, a previous video or two, actually, but Zen 5 is the full redesign, right? Cool. Zen 6 initially was intended to have a new layout that drives really, really lower latency and finally packages the cores in a different, the chiplets in a different way than they did before. That's all still happening, but now they've redesigned entire parts of the Zen 6 architecture. So it should be just as big of a deal as Zen 5 was, which is really exciting. But you know what's also exciting? Zen 7 Prometheus. And I want to talk about that and what you should expect out of architectures coming after Zen 6, but first an ad from a sponsor. In the world of social media, connection is everything. If you are a content creator, influencer, designer, or entrepreneur, engaging with your audience with an effective online identity is everything. And Porkbun can help you with a dot .bio domain name. This piece of content is brought to you by Porkbun. Instead of using a long link tree URL nobody will understand, a short, memorable, and professional dot .bio domain name allows you to manage all of your links in one spot and be far more professionally direct with your audience to where they can find your content types and then just simply make it easy for your fans to engage with your work. And every dot .bio domain name from Porkbun provides double WHOIS privacy, SSL certificates, web and email hosting trials, and more. With Porkbun, you don't need to pay for things that should be free. And the best part? Right now, with my link in the description and the offer code BIOMLIS, you can get your dot bio domain name for less than $3. Seriously, scanning that QR code on screen or clicking on the link in the description helps the channel a ton, but you can also get your dot bio domain name for three dollars if you use the offer code b-i-o-m-l-i-s and that helps the channel even more so improve your online footprint and support moore's law is dead by checking out pork bun today so prometheus first let's talk about that code name huh it's actually one I've been sitting on for a while and was told it's just not safe to leak until other people start saying it or until some time has passed. And so I would just check every couple of weeks. Has anyone online said Prometheus? Can I finally start talking about it? And no. Well, except that I noticed this week that no one has been talking about it recently, but late last year, the codename did pop up in one of those LinkedIn leaks that I cannot believe happens all the time where someone that worked at one of these companies just says a bunch of insider information on their LinkedIn profile page and then of course has to quickly delete it when they realize they did something ridiculous. Well, yeah, apparently Prometheus was talked about late last year and I just didn't notice that. And now enough time has also passed between when I was told not to say it that I've been told I can. And so I want to say that actually a lot of websites back then were talking about Prometheus, like that was a code name for Zen 5C. And I'm told directly by someone who's worked on these products, that is not the case. And I think I know why a lot of outlets thought that Prometheus meant Zen 5C. Because if you actually look at the original article, it doesn't say they're 100% sure that Prometheus is Zen 5C. But what they do know is that this person didn't just say Prometheus on their LinkedIn profile, they said Nirvana. And of course, from my leak of Zen 5 and Zen 6 info late last year, I had a roadmap showing Nirvana as a code name. And so I think some people said, oh, well, we know from Tom's leak that Nirvana is Zen 5 standard. So if someone worked on Nirvana, they probably also worked on, well, Zen 5C, which must be Prometheus. But what these people at some of these websites I don't think know is that 
AMD has leapfrogging design teams. Like somebody that worked on an early Zen 5 thing is probably then, once they're done with that part of the design work for Zen 5, they don't just work on all of Zen 5 the whole time. They've one part of Zen 5 they worked on. And they usually then start working on the next, next architecture. So someone who would have worked on like Zen 3 would probably have done some of the similar stuff for Zen 5. It's, it's not always true, but in this case, it is. And let me put this quote on screen here. This person at AMD told me, by the way, Kailash is the codename for Zen 5C that we used, and Prometheus is the codename for Zen 7 Standard. I think a lot of people don't know that AMD is leapfrogging design teams. A lot of the people that worked on Zen 4 are working on Zen 6 right now. And I know for a fact that some of the people that did early design work for Zen 5 also did early design work for Zen 7. As for Zen 7 details, all I can say is that it was intended to be a fully new architecture yet again, like Zen 5 is intended to be. But after Zen 5's issues, it's starting to sound like it will not completely redo everything from Zen 5 and Zen 6 anymore. Oh, and it has a large focus on reducing power consumption consistently along the entire voltage curve compared to the previous few generations. And I do think it's worth emphasizing a bit on what I mean by that seemingly vague statement at the end of that quote there. Like, I know people would say, well, AMD's always trying to reduce power every generation. And that's generally true. But if you look at Zen 4, and I actually have a Zen 4 Hawkpoint tablet right here, I find that Hawkpoint at certain power consumption levels is crazy more efficient than previous generations. But that's not true of all Zen 4 products at all boost levels, right? Zen 4 gives you a lot more performance at higher clocks, but at the expense of a lot more energy. It's really at lower clock rates that it gets you that efficiency boost that AMD likes to brag about. See, Zen 7, from what I'm hearing, wants all clock speeds, all points along that curve to be operating at lower power than Zen 6, and, and that's the difference. But besides that, from the people I talked to a couple months ago at AMD, Zen 7 was still at a very high level, so I, I can't really confirm any more than that, except that AMD is starting to realize maybe they shouldn't do a full redesign of the architecture every two gens because it causes them a lot of headaches that delays their products from releasing. Oh, and then there's one more quote here. You see, I took this information that I was finally okayed to talk about this week, and I sent it to another one of my contacts who gave me some more information that I then threw out another person at AMD that said generally this is what they're hearing as well. So let me put this quote on screen. From what I am hearing, this person told me, Zen 7 continues the plan to have three or more variants of an architecture designed each generation. But unlike with Zen 6, these almost sound like they could be different enough to arguably not even really technically be the same architecture. It seems wasteful to me, and a lot of engineers are mad about this idea to how much extra effort it would take to de facto create multiple Zens every two years. Because of this, I don't think you should double down on what AMD is considering with Zen 7 variants yet. It's in flux. And I mean, I have heard different things that they're considering. Like, maybe they would have, like, <laughs> I'm serious, what I heard is they might have, like, uh, Zen 7 Standard, Zen 7 Standard uh, Epic, Zen 7 Dense Epic, Zen 7 Dense Client, and then some of those might not even uh, support the same instructions and features. Like they might strip out entire features and instruction sets on some of those. They might have at least four of them. And when all is said and done, maybe the most extreme scenarios, they aren't even really the same architecture anymore. Which, yeah, I don't know. If they could do that effectively, that sounds like an army of two nanometer products tailored to just perfectly surgically hit different targets against Intel. I can see why AMD would want to do that. But I can also see why, and I've heard this from multiple people, they're annoyed by this. Because if, well, if upper management expects AMD engineers to make multiple Zens every two years, they need to double their headcount. And so, from the sounds of it, I, I'm just suspecting here... I think maybe they will go super surgical with like one of the three or something. Like they'll have standard, they'll have a uh, dense epic, and they'll have like dense client. And maybe one of those, they massively shift a few things so it's different. It kind of sounds like there's been a lot of pushback about doing like four or more totally different variants. And, and I think that would um, become really wasteful depending on how they're using chiplets too. Because if you have to make four different types of chiplets that are mixed and matched, you better be sure you're getting double the sales or something, or you're you're putting in a lot of extra design work for niche uses, and if some of them aren't used as much, I don't know, it just sounds like a waste to me. But yeah, I'm not doubling down on the exact variance I heard for each one because I don't think the decision's even been made yet, but that is something to think about, that AMD is actually considering basically having 
multiple completely different architectures come out every two years. And if they do that, wow, that's going to be quite an army for Intel to have to fight every generation. But that's going to do it for this video. That's actually all I have to say in this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to hit the like button and to share it. And then also, please consider uh, subscribing to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel, ringing that bell button, and joining the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon. I actually have a Hotpoint Minis Forum V3 tablet right here. I'm testing it. I kind of wanted to get my review out this week, but... I just didn't have the time. It's I'm learning like how much work really goes into an early release product testing and updating BIOSes and testing and retesting things. You know, and there isn't a lot of guides out there for it, the little tricks you can do. And I think a, a more long-term usage review with little tricks I've found and overclocking would be a much more interesting video for you than me just throwing out a rush review this week. So I decided to do this video instead. And well, I've actually already put out my early thoughts on a die shrink that is on the Moore's Law that Patreon, the lowest tier gets access to this hour-long video talking about Hawk Point and Meteor Lake and Strix and just what I think about tablets and this tablet in general. So remember, join us for just $2 a month and you'll get access to that and hundreds of other die shrink episodes. But besides that, I just want to say to anybody who's made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. <laughs>